From allergies to zinc deficiencies, hangry to hay fever, we provide easy to absorb information to improve your health. It sounds like health on Texas A&M Health Talk. Howdy, welcome to Sounds Like Health. This is Mary Lee Meyer. And I'm our co-host, Sam Craft. And we are here today to talk about happiness. And we brought in Dr. Carly McCord. She's a licensed psychologist. She's the director of telebehavioral health and a clinical assistant professor with the Department of Psychiatry and Educational Psychology. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. She's also happy a lot of the time I see her. She's the happiest. She is the happiest. <laughs> the happiest I do of like happy. being happy. <laughs> and I study happiness. Yeah. I was lucky enough to get to do my dissertation on happiness. You did an entire dissertation on happiness? Yes. How do you do that? Like, I'm like, what do you, I can't even, I don't know where to start with that. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Well, I came to the program knowing that I wanted to uh, do positive psychology research and then wanted to fit that in with the faculty at Texas A&M. And so Dr. Tim Elliott studies um, rehabilitation psychology and so I was able to look at trajectories of happiness following uh, severe disabilities like spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, burns and fractures. I'm so glad you think of happiness like that because I think of happiness as like riding on a wave runner or driving my car or mm-hmm. like there's you know, like the little things that everybody takes for granted or like day. the leftover cookies in the break yes. room. Oh, that's a great point. <laughs> yes, for sure. I like that phrase though, positive psychology. Yeah, so historically in medicine and psychology we spent a lot of time researching and trying to figure out what's wrong with people and around the 90s there's a big push to try and figure out what's right with people um, and capitalize that on that do you think a lot of that was um from the the events of the military that were happening around that time you know the iraq iraqi war was all that and, and i think ptsd was kind of coming to a realization that this really is what it was and not just the war syndrome or whatever they called it, you know, in the older days. Do you think that had any part in that? Or is it just a That's natural a shift? Question. To That's a good question. I would love to pick the brains of some of the positive psychology um, founding fathers. Yeah. No, <laughs> and ask them what though, was yeah. their inspiration for sure. making that shift. And it makes a lot of sense in conjunction with, you know, traumatic brain injury and chronic pain. You know, what can you do, you know, if you're in a not very fun situation what can you do to like what mental tricks can you do to help yourself a little bit yeah absolutely that's actually um, a common misunderstanding that we often when we look at negative events in other people's lives we overestimate the impact of the negative and we think that that is really going to affect their quality of life and their happiness and so the rehabilitation psychology literature has done a good job of documenting um, that that's that really is a misconception. A lot of people find more meaning. There's these, um, you know, this idea of happiness is not the same as emotion or positive emotion. So um, it's really this authentic happiness is something a lot deeper um, than just your momentary like emotions. That, that, that just second of euphoria that you have or whatever right there's actually a a methodology for that they call it experience sampling methodology where they ping people throughout the day and ask them how they're feeling to describe how they're feeling um and so that only correlates about um 60 percent with someone's the construct that we define um as happiness um, that their positive emotion is part of it Um, but people can experience a fair amount of negative emotion and still be happy that's interesting yeah i'm trying to wrap my head around that so happiness is not necessarily positive emotion so like if i get excited about the cookies in the break room (laughs) is that that's happiness as an emotion i I mean so the i guess the word could be used two ways but um i um, seligman called it authentic happiness Mm. Um, but this idea that um, and there's it's hard to break down sometimes all these um, uh, terms because there's happiness, there's subjective well-being, there's life satisfaction, and they all kind of start to intertwine. Um, but I guess my stance would would be in agreement that happiness is something that um, is a little bigger than just your momentary emotions. Well, I think before the show we were talking about uh, you just kind of you know getting warmed up. You were talking about a formula 
for being happy. Can you can you break down that formula again? That yeah. We, that we talked about? Yeah. So um, the idea is that your happiness is composed um, partly of your set point, um, partly from your life circumstances, and partly from the things that you do. And so set point is this idea that um, there's a genetic component to your happiness. And about 50%, twin studies have demonstrated that about 50% of your variability and happiness is due to your genetics. So p- some people are just dispositionally more happy than other people, right? Is that kind of how but, depression can run in your families, the, the genetics? Mm-hmm. The same kind of concept? Same kind of concept. Okay. Set point, genetic component, about 50%. Um, only about 10% due to your life circumstances. Um, and then 40%. So I know, it is so <laughs> little. Um, and then 40% due to what you choose to do, the volitional activities that you engage in. And so, yeah, I mean, people think, so these studies, like, are people who win the lottery happier oh, yeah. sure. than people, you know, are they happier after they win the lottery? And no, they're, they're. I would definitely like to test that theory. Mm-hmm. It's been tested. <laughs> no, no, like me personally, oh, yes. I would like to I, test that theory. I will, yeah, yeah, I will be a participant in that study yeah. also. <laughs> Maybe not all the time. I could definitely be happy most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time. Uh, well, it's it's crazy to think that 10%, because you, you think, you know, being happy and, and enjoying your life is such a big part of your life, and it's just really 10% that they found. That's That's really, that's a crazy number. Yeah, so, and a lot of people think, you know, can money buy happiness? And there's been a lot of research done in that area. It can um, buy a wave runner. Ch- <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yes, it can buy a wave mm-hmm. runner. That's pretty happy. Sorry. No, no worries. Yeah, that. I would think maybe the wave runner falls in that volitional activity. I think so. You, you, but your big fancy word for happiness is, is, is my happiness. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. so interesting because I feel like all, you know, most movie plot points and most most books I read, you know, the main character will go through trials and tribulations, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of life circumstances that mm-hmm. are getting them down. Right. Um, but to hear that it's only, what did you say, 10%? Right. That's crazy. And 50% Good. is just your natural disposition, mm-hmm. right? Correct. Because oh, wow. I feel like that 10% is what we react to the most. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll get really down if, you know, somebody... We run out of cookies in the break room. Yeah, or somebody, like, cuts me off on the way to work. Yeah. 10%. Well, 10%. But then if you think of this global measure of happiness, like if you think about like, yeah, I was ticked off on the way to work because somebody cut me off, your mood rebounds, right? Mm-hmm. You rebound. So there's that. I think that's um, the idea is there's this meaningful happiness. Yeah, a, a single circumstance or event really can't throw you off from who you are dispositionally. And then these things that we choose to engage in, so is happiness, is it more of a of a deeper feeling and meaning, like psychologically, than it is like, I'm happy today? Does that make sense? It's I feel like the way you're talking, it's it's much deeper than what the average everyday person thinks happiness is. I would agree with that. Yeah? Yeah. Because <laughs> I feel, I always say, um, you know, I'm that makes me genuinely happy. Yeah. Sometimes you know, I'll say, genuinely like happy, I, though? sometimes I define it oh, like that makes me happy versus, oh, I'm like genuinely happy that you've accomplished so much and you're succeeding in your life versus, oh, yay, these cookies, you know, I'm so happy that you brought these cookies. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's like it's a different level of happiness uh, Mm -hmm. somewhere else. Well, so, okay, so there's there's always this constant pursuit of happiness, right? Um, And then the pursuit of like the positive emotion is – like in its purest form would be hedonism um and that's not i don't think that's what i mean sometimes we might be seeking that but in general (laughs) (laughs) i think there's this broader construct right and and they've some people have called it authentic happiness genuine happiness yeah it's 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 deeper than feeling good yeah and then that's that that was my question it's like it's just psychologically it's it's not just one thing it could be a multitude of things to make you happy and then how happy are you really? I guess I don't, you know, as far as levels of happiness. And I guess, you know, I, when I think about it, if you really think about cookies in the break room or whatever your example is, there are times that you are way more happier, end quote, that, you know, whatever, than you are for little things that just like, oh, that makes my day better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. maybe it's something like in a few weeks, I'm going to forget that there were cookies in the break room, but in a few weeks, I will not forget that you're succeeding in life. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, yeah, it's like the cookies are the little things. And yeah. The, the other things are bigger things. 
And I think if you focus so much on just the positive emotion, then you miss out on the value of negative emotion, number one, like anger and frustration and sadness. Those are all adaptive in certain areas and a response to certain things. And if you don't have those from like an authentic happiness standpoint, you can't be authentically happy. You can't have, you have to have this complete range of experiences and emotions to be a complete person. Is happiness contagious? Like it always says, I've always heard that it is, but like mentally, is it really? A smile is. Oh uh, Yeah. I mean, is there any, any I don't know the literature to, to on that? happiness contagion effects. I would think, um, I mean, there might be some I, out there. I do know that acting happy leads to happiness. Like even if you don't actually mm. feel happy. That um, is interesting. Down to like the core, um, one of the core studies was um, putting a pencil in your mouth. She, like gives you a, a, smile. A, a smile and then the surveys that they filled out and and i can't remember if there was any kind of biological markers there too still but that's super showed interesting that it yeah it changed how people were thinking and feeling so i would think um, it's probably so the fake it till then. you make it thing <laughs> um is real and you know going back to what i said earlier i think it's got to be balanced with if you're faking it all the time and you're never honoring your real experience then that's probably not going to pay off yeah well it's not it's mm-hmm. not genuine it's, it's not, not genuine. yeah neither are you at that point if you're faking all your emotions yeah yeah well. and if something makes you angry don't fake that you're happy through it because like you said angry is a genuine emotion that yeah is an important one yeah well, it's, it's like grief and and mm-hmm. sadness I, I think there's you know people that don't express that in, in the right way there's much more a lot more problems down the line. So I think it's it's important to express all your emotions for that matter. But Absolutely. The more you can honor them, then you can move through them. If you ignore emotions, so they, they just, have they, something they, they to tell you. And they, yeah, yeah, then, then they, they have to get up. out eventually. Right. Uh, you know, good, bad, or ugly, they have to come out eventually. Right. You said something earlier that I'm interested in. You said something about negative outcomes or oh no, what was it? It was <laughs> about your expectations of a bad event oh that we overestimate yes yeah what what is what does overestimate a a bad event mean like if we saw that somebody um got a cancer diagnosis or a spinal cord injury and they couldn't walk anymore and so when we as outsiders look at that we say that's so hard i don't know how i could do that i'd be miserable if i you know if i lost the use of my arm i you know i'd be an incomplete person when it's ourselves we take our entire lives into context and often find people are people are resilient and find meaning um, from difficult circumstances. So it's just this it's this outsider bias of looking onto other people's lives. We think, how could we do that? They like, must like, be miserable. Poor them. This is awful. And yeah. the other person's like, no, no, no. This is this has changed my life for the good. It's shown me I can I can do this on my own and I can get back to where I was. Yeah. And, that's interesting. So what are what are some things that people can do every day to, you know, because you said that, what was mm-hmm. it, 40 or 30 percent? 40 percent. Well, you know, what what are some real life examples? Um, some of the most tried and true ones are um, volunteering and getting outside of yourself and giving away to others is absolutely a happiness promoting um, activity. Uh, practicing gratitude. Uh, so that can be, there's lots of great gratitude apps even, but whatever kind of practice works for you. I know some people that go f- on gratitude walks with their partner um, or even solo with your pup and just <laughs> kind of recounting um, some of the things that you're grateful for. So that 40% is, it's not just, when I say 40%, to me, it's, it's almost like I'm thinking like it's very specific things, but it's really like day-to-day things that just bring you joy, whether it be exercising or walking the dog or mm-hmm. I say watching TV because that brings people joy, brings people happiness to certain people. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost just like everyday things. Is that is sure. that a good way of thinking about it, that 40%? But I feel like what you've listed brings a different kind of happiness than like watching TV. You know, because I am not happy when I exercise. <laughs> I do not like I do not like it. Yes. Like I do not... Sure. enjoy that activity it does not bring me happiness in the moment like watching tv does sure. but like a couple hours after i exercise i feel a little bit better you know my spirits are 
lifted a little bit. That's I think it's just person with the person, crazy. though. I mean, I you know, I I don't like working out either. That's I'm not that doesn't make me happy. But I know uh, some people they enjoy writing and like they love that makes them happy. That is not my life. I have no interest in writing. Not not a fan of that. But I think it just goes person to person and what you what your interests are and what you like to do. Well, and I think you're speaking to that authentic happiness piece of like the the struggle leads to you know greater authentic happiness so volunteering gratitude gratitude. so yeah and those are you know practices that you can instill exercise sleep engaging in meaningful relationships you know taking time Mm -hmm. to spend time with people that matter and those are it's kind of ironic how those are all the things that I feel like go out the window for me when I'm stressed or you know, busy with something else. I for sure. don't just exercise take, as much. I don't too. sleep as much. Yeah. I don't think to stop my day and be thankful for what, like who is around right. me and what's around me. Yeah. It's so great to have that research and literature base to say and prove to us, you know, that these things really do matter and can make a difference if you are intentional about doing them. So from your from your research or your study that maybe you can speak to this maybe you can't um, uh, you know that they've always said that you know if you're if you're happy and you smile a lot you're you're going to live longer like you have a better life is that is that tied to mental health I mean obviously it feels like it is but does it go anywhere else I mean can you speak on that Yeah I think there is some evidence that people who are um, happier live longer And when is the point you know because now I'm wondering if my happiness has been you know, authentic happiness or genuine <laughs> happiness. Um, you know, it's like, what, what's, like fake happiness. Like, yeah, like, what, really what's it? the point? Like, if you're, for people who are listening that are wondering, you know, is my happy, are, is my, are my levels of happiness appropriate? You know, what's the point for people to maybe go see somebody or ask ask for help? Like, what what's oh, normal? Hap- yeah. Well, I mean, that's another shift too like with this movement and the research has shifted this idea of when you can go s- talk with a mental health provider or a, or a coach yeah. yeah that that um you know we're created to thrive and so there are there are some folks who absolutely w- will meet with um, professionals to reach another level of productivity another level of happiness and they're not they're not clinically depressed, um, but I think that's another end of the spectrum. And, and the treatments would look different, and the path of you know what the therapy would look like would be a little bit different. Um, but yeah, certainly folks who um, on the depression side who are just loss of interest um, in things that you previously enjoyed, um, feelings of being sad and depressed and blue, trouble sleeping, eating more than you used to or less than you used to. Um, just kind of general either agitation or slowing of your behaviors and then you know the key piece is like how's it impacting your functioning Um, if you're not able to get out of bed or you're you're really struggling um, at work it's we have really effective treatments for depression both therapy and pharmacological that can help well in talking about the other side of the coin depression being that I think a lot of people don't realize when they are depressed and, and I don't think they don't they, they know when to go get help mm-hmm. and it's a lot better now than what it used to be you know the, the stigma with mental health and I can't go see somebody because they'll think I'm crazy right so I mean I, I think that's that, that's gone out the window and I think anybody that that thinks they need help should definitely at least try to find someone to ask about it yeah I think it's getting better I mean one in four of us is gonna one in four is gonna have Um, a mental illness I have a history of depression and anxiety and have been to rounds of therapy when things aren't going well and get back on track and I think it's um, good I mean you know for me when I'm down or whatever it helps me to talk to somebody whether it's my wife or or, or anybody else just just get it out of you absolutely I think that's great when you hold it inside it's just living in the darkness and it's growing and so it is important to talk to someone even if it's not a professional yeah because you, you can, can on the happy change track. half of that happiness equation. <laughs> yeah. You know, even you that's, that's, that's in your control. And even after, you know, the 10% of life events, you know, if you get let go from your job and mm-hmm. you're having a hard time mm-hmm. coping with all those difficulties that come with it, um, you know, it's okay to get help to yeah. help you get that 10% yeah. back to yeah. where it was. Yeah. And they're real practical things that we can do. But like you said, it's 
it's so it's always hardest to do them when you feel bad and so um, some people are you know better than others about being able to just stick to it and start something new Um, but counseling is great for that that you have somebody that can help you organize your thoughts you know get it out there clarify it then set goals you know that are we call them smart goals like specific they're measurable they're achievable, uh, they're achievable. Like yeah. yeah they're time bound just, yeah a lot of people just feel lost and they don't feel like they can ever get somewhere i think finding yeah. somebody that can help you do that is very important yeah mm-hmm. like if you make a goal to just be happier yeah you need to have some way to quantify it mm-hmm. you know you need you can't just become happy you can just become happier but that's not you need to make your goal something attainable and achievable Definitely. like i want to volunteer twice a week right. moving forward um, you know, I want to try and exercise three times a week, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and it's good. Yeah. It's good to be realistic with yourself, right? Of it'd be great if I could just shift gears and work out every day. But like f- for me, what's reasonable once this week. Great. Go for a walk mm-hmm. once this week and feel good about it. <laughs> so, yeah, so maybe every day you find, find a task that, that you think will make you happier and just make it a goal to yeah. accomplish that for the day. Yeah. I include that in my treatment plans, like when we are working with depression or really literally most everybody I work with of make sure you're picking something to engage in that's that's tangible to positive makes you feel good. What else can you tell us about what is happiness and what isn't happiness? I think we talk about what predicts happiness and and what doesn't um, from the literature that a lot of times we might think that your age um, predicts your happiness. That's not a very strong predictor, Um, although there is a little bit of evidence to say that um, older adults have greater uh, life satisfaction. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. It is, isn't it? Um, Gender doesn't really matter. Well, women do have higher rates of depression but they also are more joyful Uh, educational levels whether or not you have kids uh, the amount of money you need a like a baseline enough money to meet your basic needs and then beyond that money doesn't matter physical attractiveness is not related does not predict happiness Mm -hmm. and those are all things i feel like our society values well yeah they all think those are for sure certain things that make you happy like Mm -hmm. extra money or physical appearance i think Mm -hmm. that's a lot of things so it's really just misconceptions it's not that true genuine happiness is it Uh, what we do know predicts happiness is these things that bring us meaning in life so meaningful work and leisure time meaningful relationships uh faith and spirituality is a predictor of happiness and then you know tied to something we talked about before sleep patterns um exercise those things are predictive of happiness just what? kind of taking care of your body mm-hmm. what is meaningful leisure time because i feel like i always feel kind Ooh, of guilty you tell me what's your meaningful leisure time? <laughs> i always feel kind of guilty taking time i know it's important but taking time to wind down you know i might watch a show mm-hmm. on tv i might you know mess around on the internet for a little bit but then i feel guilty that i should be doing the dishes or laundry i should call my friend that i haven't spoken to in a while i think it's just whatever, what make, is what meaningful whatever makes you happy like that's meaningful to you i guess i mean that's again i think it's just subjective to what you like to do in life yeah so that's i flipped true. it on you i there there's <laughs> there's no research definition for meaningful leisure or like it's not prescriptive of if you do this yeah it's meaningful mm-hmm. leisure it's just all suggestions too yeah. maybe you should try this this or this mm-hmm. So to recap, happiness is this combination of who you are as a person that we can't change, right? Can't really often change our life circumstances, but there's stuff that we have ownership over. So what do you guys want to do intentionally to try and boost your authentic happiness? Authentic happiness. I think I'm going to try to exercise more because... I, again, I don't like doing it, but it does make me feel really good afterwards. So I think I'm going to try to get in the habit. Uh, I wish I was one of those people who love the run. I, that's, yeah. that's just not my life. But I so do what are you going to do? Well, that's what I do. I do. I do enjoy working out. So I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm going to give it a try and see if I can develop. Like you're going to the gym, or you're no, gonna no, no, no. I've got a park. I've got a park next gonna... to my, next okay. to my house. Go out there and, and walk the park with uh, with my son. And how many times a week? Uh, at least I say at least three. We'll start off with three. I, I think I can commit to three. I mean, like time wise, that yeah. that's what I think I can commit. That's a to. big commitment. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. not ready to commit to three. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a playground, so my son can play. You know, he likes that. Yeah. So, what about you, Mary Lee? 
Um, I'm not sure. I already, for the most part, have been really bad this past week. Regularly work out um, yeah. three, to four, three to four times a week. You know, I just get on the elliptical and put on a TV show on my phone. But I have been looking into some sort of volunteer yeah. effort. And, you know, I'm relatively new to town. Um, you know, some looking at the food bank or a local hospital. Um, some sort of community engagement to do in my free time. Um, so I think so what's my a good next smart step? goal is going to be to find one and sign up. Oh, that's... That's easily doable. You can do that today. Um, because, and, all, and also, to, that's one of those well, things... Or you could just say, I'm going to make a list this week. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Baby steps. I'm going to make a call yeah. and find out what the minimum commitment is for the food bank. I like the And the list maximum. Idea. Or like, what are the options? I like the list idea. And maybe I'll sign up in the next three to four months. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're pretty busy. There's a lot going on. I, I, I get it. You know, little baby steps. I'll sign up right after allergy season is over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty bad right now. It's hard to see that far into the future of like, well, you don't know how you're going to feel after you have that additional information. You may be super pumped and motivated. So, Or I may not like any of any the of options. Them, and you have to, I need keep to start looking. the list over. Yeah. Um, what about you? What Dr. am McCord? I going to do? I want to, I had, I'm trying to get in motion again and i had gotten really good at doing a hundred not real push-ups but hey, push-ups. close enough yeah. Ooh, close enough in the morning to mm-hmm. start my day just that's awesome. moving. and then i fell off the wagon this last week so right. tomorrow i'm gonna wake up on a saturday that's every day i you can just roll out of bed and do it if i just i don't know why i got off well track, the, the, the saying you know the saying goes if, if you just do it it'll be done mm-hmm. so you know, that's, that's kind of the way just I look at it. Just do it. I got to get home. It's like, I got to take out the trash. And it's like, oh, I don't want to take out the trash. Just do it. It'll be done. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. Just, yeah. So, man, movement was our, yeah. well, volunteering, actually. I said movement was our theme, but. It's mental movement yeah. for me. <laughs> mental movement. Because I've been, I've been sitting on, I've been wanting to do it for months, but yeah. haven't. Engage, mm-hmm. right? Be intentional. Okay. I think we can all take a little from the happiness equation. You know, it's that, what is it, 50%, 40%, 10%? Mm-hmm. It's good to know. Thank you for coming on the show, Dr. McCord. Thank you for having me. It's been a good talk. Stay happy. Stay happy mm-hmm. and stay listening. This has been another episode of Sounds Like Health. Thank you for joining us on Texas A&M Health Talk, a production of the Texas A&M University Health Science Center. Visit us on the web at vitalrecord.tamhsc.edu where you'll find answers to all of your health questions. Until next time, stay healthy.